In this series of videos, we're taking a look at absorption versus variable costing. In the last video, I just kind of outlined the concept, like why is this an issue? Why are we even talking about it? Absorption versus variable costing. Uh, in this video, we're going to work through a, a small problem on absorption versus variable costing. Uh, the problem, as always, is attached right below this video, so you can click on the link and uh, download the problem and have it on your own screen and practice with it or whatever you need to do. Uh, let's have a look at the problem. The question says, maybe I'll zoom in a little closer. Weber Company began operations at the start of the current year, having a production target of 60,000 units. Actual production totaled 60,000 units. So that's nice. We're planning to make 60,000 units. We made 60,000 units. And the company sold 95% of its manufacturing output. Well, let's actually do a little math there. So if I do a little calculation and I go 95%, oops, 95%. Why did that go to zero? Oh, equals 0.95 times 60,000. I haven't used this calculator for a while. It's 57,000. So we had 60,000 available to sell. We sold 57,000 because we sold 95%. And actually, that's how much do I have left over then? If I had 60,000 to sell, I sold 57,000. My inventory left over is going to be 3,000. Like I got 3,000 sitting there waiting to be sold, right? I made 60,000 units, I sold 95%, that means I sold 57,000, I got 3,000 left over. It doesn't tell us that, but that's like, and I don't even know if that's part of the question, but that's sh that sort of thing should be flashing in your mind when you get that little percentage there. Um, okay, at $50 a unit. Oh, so we can even figure out like sales revenue. I, I think we got the, the startings of an income statement, right? I sold 57,000 units, I sold them for 50 bucks a piece, you know, whatever that is, $285,000, $2.85 million in sales. Yeah, $2.85 million in sales. Um, okay, well, anyway, let's continue. The following costs were incurred. Direct material used, four bucks a unit, 240 grand in total, and I, I assume that's just four, yeah, four times 60,000, right? Per unit is four, in total is 240. Four times 60 is 240. Uh, eight times 60 is 480 for our direct labor. Our variable overhead was six bucks a unit and fixed was $600,000. You notice there's no per unit amount because we don't typically think of fixed costs per unit, although that may change in this problem. Uh, selling an administrative, our variable selling an admin was 180 grand or $3 a unit and our fixed so, uh, selling an admin was $630,000. So part A says, Compute the product cost under absorption costing and under variable costing. We'll do part A in this video. We'll probably split out uh, part B into a separate second video. But let's start by just computing that product cost. And let's start with the variable costing because it's really easy. So we know the cost of any product is the material plus the labor plus the overhead. Easy enough. Now, variable costing says, okay, well, again, as I mentioned in the previous video, direct material is generally going to be variable, well, actually, almost always going to be variable, direct labor. In the management accounting, we typically consider direct labor to be a variable cost. Overhead, though, is the one that has fixed and variable components. So, again, if I think about making a burger, the meat, the bun, that's variable cost. The direct labor, the wages of the hands that prepare the burger, that's variable. If I have more burgers, I'll hire more workers. Fixed costs, though, I mean, overhead is often a fixed cost, like utilities might be fixed or a large portion of my utilities be fixed. Certainly property taxes or rent is a fixed cost. Uh, and there are some variable overheads. Indirect labor may be variable. Um, other, there, there may be a number of other variables overhead cost. So anyway, we add those together and we get our total cost. Well, I'm interested now. The question has asked us, um, it said compute the product cost. Well, material, labor, overhead, those are the components of my product cost. Under first absorption costing, then variable costing, I'm going to do it in reverse order. I'm going to do variable costing first, then I'm going to do absorption costing. So under variable costing, 
I just take my variable materials, my variable labor, and my variable over and add them together. So let's do our variable cost. I'm going to take my variable materials, four bucks per unit or 240. I'll, I'll do it on a per unit basis here. Our variable labor, eight bucks, and our variable overhead, six bucks. Four plus eight plus six, that's eighteen dollars. And that indeed is the cost of my product. Now, what we need to determine now is, well, given that our budgeted, well, that's that's variable costing, we're done. <laughs> Fixed uh, absorption costing just says, okay, exactly the same as variable costing, except you gotta include fixed MOH. Now, I wouldn't normally figure out a fixed cost per unit, but that's what gets absorbed into the product. So if we, we assume that our, our fixed overhead, um, sort of if I want to get a fixed overhead rate, I'm going to take my budgeted fixed overhead. I don't have to worry about budgeted variable here because I'm only worrying about fixed now. That's the only difference between the two my budgeted fixed overhead divided by my budgeted production I should get an overhead rate, right? Estimated MOH divided by the estimated activity or the estimated production gives us a rate. So my fixed overhead is budgeted, and again not my fixed selling in a minute, my fixed overhead is budgeted at 600 grand. My budgeted production here, my planned production was 60,000 units. Oh, I love when numbers work out like this. So my fixed overhead per unit is $10 a unit. So if I'm having variable costs of four for direct materials, eight for labor, and six for variable overhead, I've total variable uh, product cost of 18 bucks, my fixed product cost of 10 bucks, my total absorption cost is going to be $28. So to answer question one, part I, it says compute the product cost under absorption costing. Well, the product cost under absorption costing, that's my answer, 28 bucks. For part II, part two, <laughs> My product cost under variable costing is just $18. Now, variable costing is always going to be lower than absorption costing. The reason is it's got all the same components, only it doesn't have the fixed cost. So, of course, if we include an extra cost, uh, it's going to be more under absorption costing every single time. And we're going to see how that affects the company's profit from year to year and how it affects just the accounting. Uh, if we look at a company income statement uh, and compare absorption versus variable costing. That's going to be in the next part of this video. We've answered part one, though. We've determined our product costs are 18 bucks under variable costing, 28 under absorption. Stay tuned for the final part. Very exciting.